Hey there everybody, Kay here on my homestead. Well, I am here with the fire going and we're gonna have a chilly night tonight and tomorrow night. So winter's not quite over. <laughs> I'm actually happy about that because I, I didn't get all the winter work done inside. <laughs> But I thought I would share some information with you. Something happened, um, something interesting happened today and I thought I might share some information with you because I know everyone suffers from various intestinal problems. Not everyone, but a lot of people do. And, and I just thought, well, let me, let me kind of start and, and make this a thread and make it a story. Uh, because what happened today is uh, I ate some food for breakfast, you know, eggs, bacon, and uh, some fermented vegetable, avocado, and a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, I've been eating that three, four days in a row, and no problem. But today, I didn't wait... I waited about 45 minutes or maybe an hour and I had a banana and a half in a bowl with uh, sliced in a bowl with milk with the uh, the low processed uh, whole milk that I buy it was delicious but here we are several hours later and I still have indigestion okay so there's a reason for that <laughs> Now, some people may have cast iron stomachs, but I don't. And uh, I just remembered back when I first was in New York, I met a man who was my voice teacher. He was recommended to me and I went and met him. And he was a, a small but very strong man. He was from Sweden originally. And he was in his mid-70s at that point. And he lived in Staten Island with his wife and he would take the, I guess he would get dropped at the ferry. He would take the Staten Island ferry and the subway all the way up to Carnegie Hall. And he had a little, well, it wasn't little, but he had a studio in the tower at Carnegie Hall. That whole tower behind the, the opera hall has studios where they rehearse various things and he had a studio and he had a grand piano a uh, an L model which is between the baby grand and the concert grand and he had that in there and I just remember you know when I first went there I would see him and he would spend all day working and what he would have for lunch he would take his lunch break half an hour and he would have a wedge of lettuce. It was like rabbit food, really. He had a wedge of lettuce and a half of a green pepper. And those are the only two I remember specifically because this was, you know, this was in 1982 or 83. And, and he explained to me about this book, which I wound up getting and I wound up practicing and it was called Food Combining Made Easy by Herbert M. Shelton. I just looked it up, it's still on Amazon. I had this book for a long time, but I've moved many times and I don't know where it is. So I can't show it to you, but I'll, I'll show you a picture of it on the screen. The two basic principle, well, the, the basic principle, the two, two rules that I remember specifically that I practiced and I continue to practice today all these years later is you don't eat, uh, let's see, you always eat fruit first. You always eat melon alone with nothing. Yeah, I think those are the two things I remember. You eat fruit first because fruit digests in your, your stomach. But everything else your starches, your vegetables, your, your meats, cheese, all pasta, whatever, bread, all of that digests in the small intestine. Wait, do I have that right? Yeah. And so <laughs> if you eat food with protein and, and so forth, vegetables, if you eat a comp 
complicated meal. And that's another thing the book, you know, talks about is, you know, try not to eat complicated meals because if you want maximum energy for the day, for your, you know, for your life, don't complicate your meals so that your body has to work so hard to digest it. And then you just can't do anything else because your body <laughs> needs all of that energy to digest your meal. Well, what happens if you eat fruit after your meal? And, and it's interesting because how many times have you seen, you know, people have a, 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 a party and, and there will be, you know, fruit and this and that. And, and people will go through the line, the buffet, and get a whole plate of food and they'll put a slice of watermelon on there. And I'm going... Uh, you better eat that first and wait for all the rest <laughs> uh, because it only takes fruit 20 minutes to break down in the stomach. But, but all that other food doesn't break down until it gets into the small intestine. So it has to have, this is what I remember from the book. I am not an expert. I'm not a doctor. So please do your own research. But this has been true in my, in my own life. Your, all that other food has to get out of your stomach and get into your small intestine before the fruit can begin to break down. So what happens is you've got all that mixed in there. To If you eat fruit after a meal, you've got all that mixed in there and you're going to have indigestion. You're going to have gas. You're going to have burping. <laughs> so... Uh, look into that. That might be something that could be helpful to people. And so today this was happening to me. And when I was out, I thought, oh, you know, for our preps, we want to have our medical supplies, you know, stocked up for our preps, right? In case everything breaks down and we can't get to the store, can't get to the pharmacy. And so I, I keep Rolaids. Oh, I meant to look this up. I'm going to go look this up. Uh, but I was completely out of Rolaids. Now, Rolaids are completely white. And all of those things are made out of calcium carbonate. And um, so hold on one second. I'm going to go look it up and I'll be right back. Okay, I just looked it up. And I'm wrong. I was thinking that there was nothing in Rolaids except for calcium carbonate. Now the extra strength Rolaids has magnesium hydroxide. So calcium and magnesium, that's, that's all good. But look at your other, in, your other inactive ingredients. And there's a bunch of other stuff in there. Like dextrose and sucrose. Those are all sugars. And some kind of a, a mint flavor. Anyway. I had been occasionally having a Rolaids and I was out. And so when I was out, I thought, I'm just going to stop into the pharmacy and get some. Well, this is a little local, local pharmacy, not a big chain, and they were out. And they, let me just preface this by saying they were very, very nice. The, no one was in there. And so there are two ladies helping me looking for the Rolaids, couldn't find them. The thing was empty. And, and the pharmacist comes over. Everyone was very nice, wonderful ladies. And the pharmacist said that the, she, she said the Tums, they did have Tums, which I did wind up buying. And she said the Tums only has one ingredient, but the Rolaids extra strength has the two. Well, what I, and, and so I went ahead and bought this. And I, I was looking at the label in, in, the, in the store. And I was reading here. And active ingredients. Um, and it just says calcium carbonate. And, I th and I'm, I'm scrolling all the way down. I don't see anything else. And what I didn't realize is there's a little label. You know, a sticker that they have put on there. And so I get out to the car and I whip this open because I'm going to take one and I look at it and it's kind of lilac color. And, you know, I'm always used to the Rolaids are pure white. 
I don't get anything with any extra flavors or colors or anything because all those nat all of even natural flavors can have a hundred chemicals in those. And I, if you've been watching me lately, I've been talking a lot about reading labels and not taking in all those. The, the, the fewer toxins you take in, the healthier you'll be and the less work you'll have to go through to detox those out of your system. It just makes sense, right? So I start to whip this out and pop one in and it was like lavender. And I thought, well, wait a minute, calcium carbonate, when you buy just that, or the Rolaids is pure white. And I'm going, let's just see. So then I realized there's this label here, this sticker underneath it says other ingredients, FDA C blue number one, FDA C red number four, and then flavors and, and various and other stuff. Well, one of the things that we were alerted to very early on in this journey of trying to get healthy and to de, you know, try to take chemicals out of our lives. I had a child with asthma. I went through everything. All the carpet came out, uh, air filters in every room, uh, dust mite covers on every mattress, every pillowcase. Uh, all the chemicals went out. Everything that came in was plant-based. I mean, I had to really, really completely change everything when he was diagnosed with asthma. And so the, the colors that they put in food and, and, and pharmaceuticals is, uh, I mean, I think the F, I, I won't speak out of turn, but I, my recollection is that number four, it can cause cancer. So uh, you want to look out for that. I mean, why do you want to put something fake into your body anyway? So I just immediately thought, well, I'm going to mention this. You know, I think that that, that might be, you know, it might be a revelation for some people. You might not know about this and you might not know about food combining because I know a lot of people who have intestinal problems and, and I've also talked about, I wasn't going to talk about that today. That's a whole subject, but I've talked about original wheat uh, being the original wheat was 14 chromosomes. And in 1951, the man that the scientist that went into the laboratory and found a way to mature uh, wheat, wheat grain, uh, and get two crops uh, at 18 inches instead of your amber waves of grain in our, you know, remember that in the song, uh, amber waves of grain used to come up to your chest. So it would take all season to get to the height and then put out seed. And that was your wheat grain. So this man, he found a way to mature the wheat in a half a season. So you could have two crops of wheat in one year. Well, the, what happened is the, the new wheat, the modern wheat since 1951, uh, which is everything you see in every bakery, in every grocery store, and every, no one uses original wheat unless you specifically buy a bread that says spelt. Spelt has never been changed. Uh, spelt millet, that's never been changed. And einkorn wheat flour has never been changed. And so the, the chromosomes went to 45. At least 15 years ago, Wheat Belly came out and it was a New York Times bestseller. And back when we had respect for that institution and, and he, he had some follow-up books, so you'll, you'll find that. And in there, this is where I learned this story. I had no idea. So uh, a lot of people, this cardiologist who wrote this book said a lot of people would come to him after seeing all the various other specialists, not knowing what was wrong with them. And he would say, will you be willing to give up wheat for a month? Uh, you know, because eventually, whatever's wrong with you, eventually it winds up on your heart, right? You wind up with, you, you get, you, you let your teeth go bad in your, in your mouth, you wind up with heart disease. Isn't that interesting? Uh, <laughs> so these are all things to consider. And I, and I hope that's helpful. Uh, let's see, what else was I gonna tell you? Oh yeah, so I'm, I, went, I just went in for a doctor uh, appointment and, 
And so I'm, I'm walking by, the nurse is walking to me to the room and I'm seeing that she's got her, she's got her cell phone sticking in her back pocket. And you know, she's wearing jeans, you know that that is sitting in there for her whole, her whole day, except when she takes a break probably. And, or pulls it out to use it. So she didn't ask, but I offered the information. I said, listen, you need to be wearing, you need to be putting your phone in a Faraday case. And I, I pointed this out in, in just like an arrow with the words on the screen on one of my recent videos when you saw me working and I had this stuck in my pocket. This is my cell phone case. Well, this is, this is a, a Faraday uh, case and this particular one is lined on the inside with the Faraday cloth, which is silver. It's like a fabric with silver woven into it. And it blocks, silver uh, blocks the uh, EMF radiation. People forget to quit apps after they look at them. They just, you know, put their phone down and and they forget that they've looked at 10 different apps during that day and they're all still technically on and they're all drawing electromagnetic frequencies from the satellite or wherever <laughs> it comes from. So you'll know, I said to her, you know, she looked at me funny, you know, and I said, I said, you probably notice sometimes it gets hot, right? And she goes, yeah. And I said, that's because you've got all your apps on and every, all of that, all those EMFs are going straight into your backside. Whether she makes a lifestyle change or not, I don't know, but I had to give it, give her the advice. So I want to give you that advice too. And you can find all of this stuff on Amazon. Of course, you can use my Amazon storefront to order anything and and they'll send me a penny or two. You know, will will people listen? It's hard to know. I mean, do people really take the time? Can they be bothered? Can you be bothered to read a label and, and make a decision? I mean, I'm guilty too. You know, I just went down to the veterinarian and bought, and I had to tell her that I only needed three I only needed Revolution for three cats now, not four. Anyway, uh, I bought Revolution. You know, I went to the farm, farm co-op a few months back, and she was telling me that the, what is it, the, uh, what's it called? It's been around for a very long time. Uh, she said it just doesn't work that well anymore because the pets, and it's just been in the, out in the world too long and it's just not that effective. So I wasn't going to buy that. They don't, you know, only a veterinarian cares, carries revolution because they get a big piece of the pie. They get a big piece of the pie. I just bought this and, you know, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite too because I don't know exactly what's in this stuff. Uh, I'd much rather just, just use something natural, but you know, this, this keeps the fleas and ticks and you know, if they bring ticks into the garage and they get it on me, you know, if you get a, a Texas, um, what's it called? A Texas Longhorn tick or something that carries the new alpha gal thing that if it bites you, then you have a, um, you go into anaphylactic shock if you eat uh, any kind of beef, meat. And I, I only learned about this because this man that I met since I'd been here, uh, he handled the cattle for a farm down the road. He moved away, but he, he had it. And, you know, he was very skinny. And, 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 and I asked him, I said, you know, are you, are you a vegan or are you, are you a vegetarian? You know, because sometimes vegans and vegetarians are, are very thin. And he said, no, he had this condition, you know, he could only eat fish. I, I'm not even sure he could have chicken. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, heartworm disease kills fleas before they lay eggs, kills ticks for a full month, prevents heartworm disease, treats and controls ear mites, roundworms, and hookworms. I mean, 
you know, if all I was doing was taking care of cats, just and myself and not doing a channel and not doing a big garden and not trying to help other people and inspire other people, I would probably come up with something all natural that does all of these various uh, preventions. But I went ahead and bought this and I don't know really what's inside. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, and then I wanted just one other thing I wanted to share. When I was first here the first year, Gina, big uh, late bloomer fan, Gina had sent me this, um, oh gosh, it's got a fun, uh, reticulous, and it's just violet. It's not purple. It's not, you know, cranberry red. It's violet. And it was so stunning. And I said, you know, I had planted it down in my orchard area and um, the deer ate it down and then I don't even know, I can't tell what's where it was now because it wasn't marked or anything. So she sent me some more and I asked her the other day, I said, do you have any extra? So she just sent me some more. There are no instructions, but she'll let me know what I have to do. But it's just a few different ones and I guess I just plant them out and I can't wait to show you and share, you, share that with you. I hope that's helpful. And I just, I just uh, live to inspire anyone and everyone to grow their own food because what is the point of growing our own food, right? It's so that we know what we're eating if we grow it ourselves. You know, if you, if you make something with five ingredients, you know that's what's in it, you know? And if you go out and you grow your own peas and you come in and you put salt and herbs and, uh, Maybe a piece of bacon, but you know, bacon is, you gotta be careful with bacon. Uh, I stopped buying any bacon with nitrites. Nit at first they just had nitrates. You know, back in the day, it was 20 years ago, it was just sodium nitrate. And then it became sodium nitrites and nitrates. And then last year I was in a grocery store in town and it was a regular kind of grocery store and I just went in there to see what they had. All of the prepared meats had nitrites, nitrates, and about three other things. So I just, I just turned around and walked out. When push comes to shove and we don't have much, that's why we want to make sure we're canning, we're preserving, you know, we're putting things away. So I hope that's helpful. God bless you. Uh, I hope you subscribe, click that bell for notifications, scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here on the homestead. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.